My name is Kevin Tracy, and Zach Manchester and I are from the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon, and today I will be presenting on low thrust trajectory optimization using the kusten heimel stifle transformation. Low thrust electric propulsion is one of the key enabling technologies for modern low cost spacecraft. Unfortunately, many of the thrust planning techniques that were used for chemical propulsion do not transfer well to low thrust electric propulsion. These problems can be formulated as trajectory optimization problems, but they are normally large and difficult to solve. In 2006, the ISS used trajectory optimization to slew the station 90 degrees over a course of two hours. This optimization problem was discretized into 160 time steps. More recently, optimal control solutions for power descent guidance have had time spans of around 100 seconds, with the dynamics being discretized into somewhere between 200 and 500 time steps. This paper focuses on a GTO to GEO transfer, which can take up to 86,000 steps to simulate. This number should jump out as being significantly larger than the previous two. Because of this, some of the techniques that work for the ISS slew and the rocket landing won't work for the GTO to GEO transfer. This brings us to our goal for this research, to design a fast, low thrust trajectory optimization formulation for a GTO to GEO transfer that converges without an initial guess. The first order of business for our low thrust formulation is the chosen state representation for dynamics. Common choices for this representation are orbital elements, and this can be classical orbital elements, equinoctial orbital elements, modified equinoctial, etc., or Cartesian position and velocity. Now, unfortunately, the dynamics in both of these state representations are nonlinear even for the pure two body case. They are poorly scaled, meaning elements of the state are often of varying orders of magnitude and they are unstable for integration, meaning smaller time steps are required. Because of this, we chose to examine alternative state representations that play nicer with optimization. For some background on this, we will describe the dynamics of the levi civita transformation. First, the spacecraft position and velocity is expressed in the perifocal 2D plane, with two components of the position being stored in an imaginary number. The square root of this number is taken, with the resulting u being our new representation of our spacecraft position. Now u is not integrated with respect to true time, instead it is integrated with respect to a new fictitious time. This fictitious time slows down during perigee and speeds up during apogee. This is done to ensure that dynamics are evolving at a constant rate regardless of where it is in the orbit. The speed in which this fictitious time progresses is inversely proportional to the distance from the central body. The result of this is that the eccentric anomaly for purely elliptical orbits progresses linearly in fictitious time. The geometric result of this effect can be observed when comparing an elliptical orbit sampled uniformly in fictitious time and again sampled uniformly in true time. The resulting samples in the uniform fictitious time case are equally spaced in both arc length and eccentric anomaly. This results in even samples throughout the orbit regardless of eccentricity. For the uniformly sampled true time case, since the spacecraft is moving faster at perigee than apogee, the samples are sparse around perigee and dense around apogee. This behavior makes it a significantly worse candidate for fixed step integration than the fictitious time example. When the imaginary number used to describe the spacecraft's location in the orbit is combined with this fictitious time, the result is linear two-body dynamics. More specifically, these dynamics become a linear, simple harmonic oscillator with no damping. The solution to this is a set of sinusoids, with the behavior being dictated by nothing more than the constant specific orbital energy of the spacecraft. The question becomes, can this same process be applied to the full three-dimensional spacecraft state? The answer is yes. But in order to describe it, we must first take a look at the parallels between the 2D and 3D cases. In two dimensions, we express the spacecraft position by a scaled rotation of the unit x-axis to the spacecraft's position vector using an imaginary number. This was described as the levi civita transformation. For three dimensions, we will once again describe the position of the spacecraft as a scaled rotation from the unit x-axis, but this time, will do so with a quaternion. This resulting transformation is known as the kusten heimel stifel or KS transformation. Just like with the two-dimensional case, the dynamics of the KS quaternion can again be described as a harmonic oscillator, this time in four dimensions. This is for the unperturbed case, where the specific orbital energy is unchanged and there are no perturbing accelerations. In order to add these accelerations like thrust, higher order gravity, and drag, the following equations of motion are used. In blue, we can see our homogeneous, unperturbed dynamics, and in red, we see the necessary addition to account for these perturbations. The next step in our full trajectory optimization formulation is the cost to constraints for this problem. In order to get the spacecraft to geostationary orbit, we need to eliminate all eccentricity and inclination 
while driving the semi-major axis to around 42,000 km. This goal state is simple to describe in orbital elements, but the relationship between the KS quaternion and the classical orbital elements is difficult and nonlinear. In order to combat this, a new cost function using nothing but Cartesian components will be used to motivate the GTO to GO transfer. The first aspect of this cost function in green is a standard quadratic penalty on control usage. The next addition in red is a quadratic penalty on the difference between the actual radius and the desired geo radius. This red component is a cost on both the eccentricity as well as the distance from the target semi major axis. The last component in blue is a quadratic penalty on the z component of the Cartesian position. This penalizes any inclination present. The, fo the following cost function is convex and twice differentiable with respect to the Cartesian state. The sole constraint for this problem is that the three-dimensional thrust vector lies within the max thrust constraint. This now brings us to the last component of this trajectory optimization problem, the solver. This problem was solved using the Augmented Lagrangian Trajectory Optimization Solver, or OUTRO. This solver is based on differential dynamic programming and can handle the max thrust norm constraint natively without having to form linear approximations at every iteration. This solver is able to exploit the Markov structure and the dynamics to only solve for the control variables and enforce the dynamics constraints implicitly during a forward rollout. A significant contribution of this formulation is that for each of the following solves, the GTO to GO transfer was instantiated with a guess of all zeros. This means that no a priori information about a solution was used to warm start the solver in any way. To demonstrate the effectiveness of our formulation, three different test cases were used. The first was a 30-day transfer, the second was a 60-day transfer, and the third was a 100-day transfer. The 30-day transfer used 1,501 knot points, was constrained to one newton of thrust, the solver solved it in 2,763 iterations in a little less than three minutes. For the 60-day transfer, 2,801 knot points were used, the thrust was constrained to 0.59 newtons, and the solver achieved convergence in 6,158 iterations in a little less than 13 minutes. For the 100-day transfer, 3,501 knot points were used, the thrust was constrained to 0.32 newtons, the solver converged in 10,789 iterations, and the salt took a little less than 31 minutes. The mass for all spacecraft involved was set at 1,000 kilograms. The first plot of these solutions is expressed in classical orbital elements. Since the geostationary orbit can be described using the semi-major axis, eccentricity, and inclination, those three elements are plotted here. From this, we can see that all three of the solutions are successful GTO to GO transfers, with the semi-major axis being raised to the GO requirement and all eccentricity and inclination eliminated by the end of the transfer. All three of these solutions are able to drive the described orbital elements to their target values simultaneously. This next plot looks at the total magnitude of the solved thrust vector. We see that in each of these three scenarios, the thrust is at a maximum allowable for almost the entirety of the transfer. Towards the very end of the transfer, when the spacecraft is just about at geo, the magnitude of the thrust tails down below the maximum value. This is standard behavior when quadratic cost functions are used like they were in our case. To give an idea of how large and complex the solution from Outro is for one of these problems, the ECI thrust history for the 100-day transfer has been plotted below. From this zoomed out view, it seems like each component of the thrust history is very spiky and then comes to zero by the end. In the next plot, we will look at a closer view of this thrust history to examine that these aren't actual spikes, but in reality are periodic behavior. Here we have two examples zoomed in periods from the same thrust plan. We can now see that what looked like spikes when zoomed out are really just the peaks and troughs of the solution. These two zoomed in views show that the solved solution is mostly periodic with small changes happening as the orbit itself changes. This is the sort of behavior you'd expect from an optimal thrust plan and gives us confidence in our solution. Finally, here's an animation of the spacecraft during the 100 day transfer. As we can see from the animation, this solution is not a multi-phase approach, and by that I mean there aren't designated in-plane and out-of-plane adjustment phases. The thrust plan here is tackling both in- and out-of-plane changes simultaneously. The result is a fluid trajectory bringing this spacecraft from GTO to GEO. In summary, our work has examined a low thrust trajectory optimization using the KS-transformed orbital dynamics. These dynamics are linear in the unforced case, resulting in a harmonic oscillator for two-body motion, and in the forced case, behave well under linearization. 
This allows us to describe the solution using fewer knot points and converge to a solution without any guess at all. The solver used in this, Outro, handles the low thrust constraint natively and efficiently. All of the code used to produce the examples is on the GitHub posted below. Thank you for watching.